The Timberwolves select Kevin Garnett from Farragut Academy. A high school kid? No chance. You saw the future of what basketball was about to become. He does whatever it takes to win a basketball game. All I know is all out. I want to be challenged to the end. Kevin Garnett, Anything is Possible, now streaming on Showtime. Empire. Hello and welcome to my podcast. Today I'm joined by Washington Safety Bobby McCain as we discuss the secondaries improved play of late and how they can maintain this level of play down the stretch. And I talked to my man, Tailgate Ted. It's Carolina week, which means Carolina barbecue, and of course, that means pulled pork. Stick around if you want some good information and one spicy vinegar sauce that you might enjoy. You can follow Ted on Twitter at Tailgate Ted, and you can read my work on ESPN.com. I'll have a story up Friday about Ron Rivera's return to Carolina. One little nugget, you won't believe the size of the steak he used to get after home games. Also, Ted is helping to collect coats and goods for Afghan refugees, as well as for those less fortunate. Contact him on Twitter if you are able to help. Ted told me he'd even go around collecting the goods, coats, and other things. You just have to contact him, or he can tell you where to drop them off if you don't need him to come pick it, pick it up. Regardless, we're ending the holiday season. Whatever you can do is a big help. Before I play my conversation, a short prediction. I love how Washington played last week. It's hard not to, starting with the confidence they showed. That's huge. I do think it's a sort of confidence that can help them get on a little roll. But you got to go out there and build on it. My concern remains the health of the roster. If I knew that tight end Logan Thomas or Ricky Seals Jones would play in return, I'd feel much better. I'd say Curtis Samuel, but we know what that situation has been all season. Tight ends are different. Thomas's hamstring, though, is a little bit worse than I think they initially feared, which is why he's not back out there for sure yet. He's been on a side field. There's, I, I don't know if there, how much hope there really is for Sunday, but I do think he'll probably be back for the Seattle game. I'm not 100% positive on that, though, so stay tuned for next week. But again, I'm not ruling him out for, for Sunday, but by the time you listen to this, he may have already been ruled out. I don't know. They're also facing a Carolina defense that has been terrific. It ranks second in yards allowed per game, in, rest, in yards allowed per game. They have been run on a couple of times, including by Dallas, Minnesota, and New England. But six teams have been held to less than 92 yards rushing. Washington should certainly try to stay committed to this run game. I don't think that this is a shutdown D. I do think they have speed on the edges with Brian Burns and Hassan Reddick. But I would neutralize them at times in the run game. Take them where they want to go and use pulling guards around them and run kind of right at them. Washington does a nice job using motion in the run game, and I think that will help too. But a big key for Antonio Gibson will be pressing the hole as he did last week. Watch New England run against um, the Panthers. One of the things I thought that was key was pressing the hole really well. Carolina will be aggressive with the, with the linebacker, so that's something to watch in protection as well. They do force turnovers two in each of the last three games. That's actually my main concern for Washington and quarterback Taylor Heineke. He gets away with a lot of throws. And if he's not completely on target, those getaway you, with throws you're getting away with are turned into interceptions. You know, or other or Brian Burns forcing a fumble in the pocket, whatever. That's my biggest concern here. I love Panthers corner Stefan Gilmore, knows how to play with leverage and maintain it. Watch for that. And I feel better if their starting ends were available. I do like what James Smith Williams and Casey Tuhill have to offer, but there's a definite you, you're going down a level when you lose two big athletic ends like Chase Young and Montez Sweat. I told you on an earlier podcast what I thought Smith Williams and Tuhill could do well. Smith Williams, Smith Williams' strength and Tuhill's consistency won't make them better than those they are replacing, but they are reasons why they can help. Coaches and teammates will like playing with next to or playing to Hill and then next to to Hill. For that reason, I think he'll pair well with Jonathan Allen. I think Allen does well with the guy that he can trust and knows exactly what he's going to do next to him. But those ends just need to win some one-on-ones on occasion to be effective. This is not a good Carolina line. 
but they need to do that to make sure the tackles aren't getting doubled all the time. I do think Washington will be aggressive at times, sending some blitzes. The one nice thing for Two Hill, I think he's they like to drop the ends in coverage once in a while because it's part of a blitz package. When you want him to be aggressive, sometimes that's part of it. You're going to drop the ends a little bit. But Two Hill does a nice job in coverage with that. It's an area where I think he's better than Young. So that's just something to see. How often do they do that? What are they doing off of that? Not terribly scared um, of this Carolina offense against Washington. I'm not going to buy into Cam Newton's return as him some coming back to be some great quarterback. Now, he does do some things well. He can run the ball, and the motion of it, the emotion of the game can play a role Sunday, no doubt. But as Jack Del Rio said, Newton just got there, so there's no way he can learn the entire playbook. But there are things he can do well. I just wonder if his arm can take advantage of some of the weapons down the field. That's a big concern. That would be a good concern for me or a question for me. That's why I take eight, stick him in the box, and let it roll. Force Newton to win with his arm. Make sure he's bottled up. I, I do wonder about, and one, one thing Del Rio said is they are preparing for both um, Newton and Walker at quarterback. I do wonder again about the emotion of Cam's presence. If he wasn't playing this game, I'd definitely pick Washington. It's, and it's not even about, again, how good Newton will be. It really will be about the energy in the stadium. Maybe this is the one game he plays really well. It could also be a reminder of, well, this is why he was, you know, struggled in New England last year and why he wasn't in the league earlier this year. Or we're going to see that one game, hey, it's great to have Cam back story, another one. <laughs> but I also know players will want to win for Ron Rivera and his return to Carolina. I think that kind of matters. To what degree? We'll find out. I do like the confidence this team now has, and I like their approach. And by the way, with, with well, you'll hear what McCain says about the Rivera going back there. I think they're locked on the game more so than the storylines. I do think they can absolutely win, and I've gone back and forth on this one multiple times. Initially, I was going to pick Washington, then I went to Carolina, then I went to Washington, probably back on Carolina, and I'm probably going to change my mind again before Sunday. So for now, I'm going to say Carolina 17 to 14. My confidence in Carolina really isn't all that high. My gut kind of tells me Washington, but it, but I just I don't trust certain things just yet as far as the health and the turnovers. That's it for me. After this break, I'll be back with Washington safety Bobby McCain. A few weeks ago, he wanted us to write the same blank that we did when the defense wasn't playing well. Well, now they're playing well. So here we are. What does he now think about what he said after that Falcons game? This episode is brought to you by Timberland. The Timberland boot was built to keep you warm, keep you dry. Then they passed it on for you to build something. You took it from Buffalo and Philly to Chi-Town and New York, from London to Paris, all the way to Shanghai, around the block and around the world. They built a boot. You made it an icon. Timberland, build for. Share your Timberland story and tag them at Timberland. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Football is back. And the best bet you can make is downloading the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It doesn't matter if you're new to gambling or an old pro. FanDuel has something for everyone. And as an official sports betting partner of the NFL, you know your bets are safe. There's also never been a better time to use FanDuel because right now you'll get up to $1,000 back if your first bet doesn't win. You can even turn a small wager into a big payday with a same-game parlay bet. Just sign up with the promo code SPOTIFY to place your first bet risk-free on FanDuel Sportsbook. Download FanDuel today. 21 plus and present in New Jersey. First online real money wager only. Refund issued as non-withdrawable site credit that expires in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Welcome back. Now here's my conversation with Washington safety, Bobby McCain. Well, Bobby, and I want to go back a couple weeks because... As you told us after the game, hey, when when we're playing better, I want you guys to write with the same, whatever, the colorful way you put it. Now you guys are you guys have been playing well, and so I wanted to talk to you about why you're playing well. So what do you think? Where first of all, how far back do you go to say, hey, we started playing well? It's been a while. Like how far back do you go to say we've been playing better since this game? I mean, each and every week you can really say like. You know, even though the wins haven't counted up and tallied up, but each and every week we've gotten better, especially defensively and offensively, and special teams-wise as well. But speaking on defense, just every week we're trying to put the chip in and get a little bit better. And uh past, like, I want to say three or four weeks, they've been pretty 
it's not, they haven't been bad for us. We haven't gotten the win total this morning, but, you know, defensively they haven't been bad for us. And, um, you know, just trying to really just go to each man just doing his job and doing his part and everybody just, you know, coming on, coming on, we, we all coming around, having a good time. And, you know, the chemistry is a little better between the, uh, throughout the locker room, between the defense. So just everybody feeling a little more comfortable with each other and uh, doing their part is what I would say most goes to it. And it seemed like, you know, going back a couple weeks, like what kind of, what little things were you seeing on the field that said, hey, we're starting to come around? Uh, just uh, one thing, just starting to get off the field on third down a little more. Uh, that's really been the key to unlock everything uh, with the defense. Uh, it's just getting off the field on third down. And, um, you know, also just playing together, man, playing together and having fun as a unit. You know, when you go out there with your guys, it shouldn't be, just uh, you know, going through the motions like we gotta have fun. We gotta we gotta put good stuff on tape so that way when these when the when quarterbacks see it or coordinators see it, they say, God, those those those, those guys are flying around. And you, and I thought like last week that was highly evident because the gang tackling, the swarm tackling seemed to be as good as it had been all year. But when you're playing fun like that, like why? It might be a dumb question, but why is that important? And what plays happen when you're having fun? Uh, just uh, turnovers and shit, like uh, just good plays. Every everything happens. Turnover. I mean, just, you can have more fun. It's just you know, like you, it, it doesn't feel like work. It feels more like you know, it feels like something you love. And you know, it hadn't felt like work here in Washington. So you know, we just out there having fun, man, trying to get turnovers and trying to get off the field on third down. And when you're when you're new, because you were in a, one place for what five six years in Miami. So when, when, okay, so that's a, that's a long time. So you come to new place and you have you, you're new. Landon was out most of last year. Benjamin is new. So like how, what does that, how long does it take to become a unit and not just a collection of guys? A couple, you know, it just take, it takes a little time just to understand one another. And, you know, right now we're doing well with each other. I've always known most of these guys here and, um, you know, I've always known Lando and uh, and Kendall and Will, so um, you know they're not they're pretty familiar faces. But it just takes a little time just to get the chemistry right, and you know, hopefully we can just springboard off this uh, this win against the Bucks and and keep them rolling. Sure, and like what what is what, when you have like even though you know them, you haven't played with them like that. So what are some of the little things you have to get used to? Is it about like? Is it positioning? Is it communication? What are the little things you have to get used to when it is a new situation? Uh, one, like of the, one of the biggest things is just communication, just uh, making sure, you know, we're all on the same page and making sure we're all, um, you know, doing the right things because, like, if we, if we can all get on one accord in the back end, it ain't, like, you know, it's, it's, it'll be a good play for us because there's there's just not too many people that are just going to just, you know, outplay us and or play harder than us. or So just communication is one of the biggest things. I forgot to add William Jackson there, who's also new. That's a lot of new faces for one secondary, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Definitely is. So for you as a, as a free safety, what is your role in helping bridge that communication? Because you're seeing everything. You, you've you got to be a leader back there. So what is your role in helping get to that point where you're communicating better? Uh, Just, man, I just try to just be myself and just try to just say what I see. And um, that's really the biggest thing to this is just um, saying what you see and speak and just, you know, if you see something wrong, say something. If you have my, my coach, my old coach uh, in college used to always tell me, if you see something, say something. So that's, that's just what I try to do. What, and then, like, one of the things that I've noticed, like, well, first of all, when it's you and Landon and Cam back there, what kind of advantage does that give you guys as a secondary? Uh, you know, just guys' versatility, man. Guys that can do it all. We got three guys in the three stages in the back end that can that can play uh, just about any position on the on, in the back end. So um, it helps us out defensively and just uh, you know with getting guys aligned. And you know, sometimes some guys may be in the right or wrong spot, but if you got the same two body types doing it, then it's the same thing. It doesn't hurt anybody. It also looked like, and tell me if I'm right on this, but like you guys seem to be able to rotate. For example, last week against the Bucks, it looked like there were a couple times that maybe Brady expected Cam to do something and Landon to do something else, and they kind of flip flopped, and it caused him to hesitate a little bit. Did you see that at all? Uh, not really. Just okay. um, 
Not really. I just, I mean, I, I get exactly what you're saying. It looked like there were a couple times. That's why I went. And I don't know, you know, there was one time, I think, late in the first half where it looks like he wants to go to Mike Evans down the seam, but Landon's there, and then he has the crosser, and Cam comes up and plays it and takes that away. But but all three of you guys were kind of back, you know, at the snap. We're back and not necessarily in your spots, but you rotated after the snap. So that's, I just wondered if that was like a strength of what you guys can do, that you can provide different looks and maybe, you know, disguise a little bit differently because of what that versatility offers. For sure. Yeah, that definitely can do that. You know, we got, like I said, three guys, um, different body types, but same mechanisms and can do all the same things. So, you know, it's definitely an advantage for us. Do you, do you, when everybody talks about disguises, do you feel like you guys have been able to do that better and more lately? Or is that, is that something like that takes a little bit of time to build? Uh, yeah, it takes a little time just to understand so we know when, what guys can do and what guys can't. And how do you feel with that? Because, like, like I said, there looked like a couple times last week where there was, you know, you the timing of some of the rotations looked pretty good. It didn't. It, it wasn't. It wasn't bad for me. You know, it's just right. being in your being in your spot, making your plays. That's all you got to do. And when you got when you when a team wins a game like that, and I know everything about this game is about the next week because you got to go win and all that. But what kind of confidence do you come out of a game like that, and how much can that help you? Oh, it helps a lot, you know, because especially with these guys being there uh, last year that played these guys and in the playoff game. So that helps a lot just coming off a good win, a big win against a really good team. And uh, that lets you know just the foundation you can set right there, and you can just start with that and take it week to week. You ain't got to look ahead too far. All you got to do is just focus on the Carolina Panthers and hopefully go one and zero this week. And for you, when you go from corner to safety and all that, was that a big transition? And what was the tough, the biggest thing to get used to? Um, just the physicality. It's a little different uh, tackling when you're coming out of the free safety position than the corner or the nickel position because you're a little closer to the ball. So I would just say just um, like a corner, you just doing a lot of running around, a lot of covering, a lot of running. And um, at nickel, you're doing more tackling than covering and a little bit of both. At free safety, you got to be able to tackle when the ball breaks and uh, and go get the football when it's in the air. Do you have to look – you seem like someone who's probably already always communicates pretty well, but do you have to improve that area when you're at safety or just do it differently because you're kind of in charge back there, right? Yeah, you just got to make sure that guys know what the what's going on. And, you know, you got to be that, that voice that, that speaks out. And if you see something wrong, you got to say something. And then for Sunday, you would have you faced Cam Newton last year, correct? Yeah, I did. What what do you what did you think about facing him? Um, just and what he could still do, and what and after watching him last week, even a little bit. Uh, you know he's still a good player, man. People, you can't write him off. People, Cam's a good player, a good quarterback. He can run, he can throw, he can make all the throws. He can, you know, we know what he's capable of in the red zone. So. Just be staying on top of that and being on top of it as a defense, you know, we got to make sure we come in ready to play because we know he's going to be back at home, back in Charlotte. This is his first game back, and we know he's going to be excited. And, you know, we just got to take it. Hopefully we can take advantage of that and make some plays. And I mean, because he obviously brings a lot of energy. So, but conversely, you guys have a coach going back there. Does it matter to guys when a guy goes – like when you have a coach that's going back to his old place – does that matter to you guys, or, you know, how do you approach that? Well, yeah, it matters, but we just try to focus on what we, you know, what's important. And that, right. you know, we, we have nothing but love and respect for Coach Rivera, and I'm sure he's got nothing but love and respect for Carolina going back and everything, but we just try to focus on the task at hand, and that's getting a win, because you focus on, um, you spend too much time focusing on the interesting things, like who's going back home and who's playing where, then you'll you'll be still be you won't be focused on winning the football game, which is the most important. And then on your, I noticed on your Instagram you have a, the phrase "pressure is a privilege." What does that phrase mean to you? Um, it just it just it's it, it, the the head coach for the Suns has said it. Um, I believe uh, during the finals, and um, it I, it kind of it kind of set with me, and it kind of just resonated with me, just because um, pressure is a privilege, man. Like. It's a, like people people would love like there's no telling like how many people would love to be in your shoes on a third down against in an NFL game. You know what I mean? Or or <laughs> the one in an NFL game. Like there's so many people that would want to be a part of that and so many people that would wanna do that and that's pressure. People don't understand that's real pressure. 
but that's also a privilege that I have and that, that's an honor that I'm that a blessing that I'm able to be in the position that I'm in. So when I say privilege pressure's a privilege, like I I, I, I want all that pressure, man. I'm I was a fifth round pick. So I, I know exactly what it feels like to be under pressure and, and, and make and do what you gotta do. Do you ever do you ever forget that you're a fifth round pick? Because like it seems like guys who are undrafted low round picks, they always remember that and they're gonna kind of carry it with them. No, I never forget it. I never forget. I never forget waiting, and I never get sitting at home pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> what was that like? Uh, I mean, what you mean? I, I mean, when you're sitting there waiting and you're getting pissed off, what is it like to watch and not, and then you know, to to watch the whole process and then to finally get your name called? It's just you just anxious. You gotta be patient. It's just it, it, it's, it's when it, when you finally called, you're so happy you forgot about how pissed off you were. <laughs> so. Um, you know, it's just uh, anxious, nervous, and just ready to get going, ready to get started. Two more things. You pick off Tom Brady last week. What is What does that mean to you? Uh, you know, it means a lot. It means a lot to me. Um, you know, he's one. He's a goat. He's one of the best players in, of all. He's one of the greatest players of all time. So, um, you know, to get a ball from him, especially in, in my case, to get three of them, you know, that means a lot to me. That's right. So, do you? What do you do with the ball after you pick it? Oh, I keep them. I keep all of them. Do you? Are you gonna get like you're gonna get yeah. like a get it painted or anything like that or a little display? No, I just put them up in my. I just put them up in the case at home. Just put them in the um in the office where I have like my jerseys and the interception balls and game balls and stuff. Just keep them all together. It's, do you, Do you like to look at them? I mean, I don't really look at them. Okay. All right. <laughs> no, but, yeah. All right. So, <laughs> Last thing. So, like I said, I start off by saying, you know, the one after the Atlanta game, you know, you guys win, and I know that the defensive guys weren't too happy. Probably, maybe some of the questioning. But when you say, when you you kind of were very passionate about that, and I'm just curious, like, where does that come from? And then, why did you feel the need to be that passionate about it? Or man, I don't even. That might be a silly question, but I just am curious about that. Just, uh, you know, I'm, I'm passionate about everything. Um... You know, I love this game. You know, I, we put, like, sometimes people don't understand. Like, people think, like, you go out there to play bad or you go out okay. there. It's like, no one, no one's going out there to play bad. No one's going out there to lose. We we expect to win every game we're in or and, and at least be in in every game we're in. Right. So, you know, right. it's, it's not like – I guess that's why I got so passionate about it, just because it felt like a – you know, I'm not sure. You know, if I, if I, if I could, I'd, I'd go back and – I probably wouldn't take it back, but you know, it's just I probably say it a little different, and I wasn't trying to be a smart ass or anything to the media. I was just trying to, you know, we had just got off a win. I we had had like a, a semi good defensively. We didn't play very well that game, and you know, so I don't know, man. It's just it just happens, and you know, some things you learn from. Just yeah, keep I, your mouth shut. Well, tr- trust me, I'm not asking you to apologize. I was just curious because that's a passionate thing. And, you know, it's after a game. And so, you know, um, that's it's right. I mean, there's, you know, it, your, your passion is who you are, right? Yeah, that's it. That's all. There you go. There you go. Bobby, thanks a lot for, for joining me. I really appreciate it. And, and we'll talk to you later. All right. No problem. Thanks, ma'am. After this break, it's time for some barbecue talk with Tailgate Ted. Carolina pulled pork. Some good tips and ideas for pulled pork. Get your bibs on, folks. Welcome back. Now, here's my conversation with Tailgate Ted. Well, Ted, because they play Carolina this week, I wanted to have you on talk about Carolina barbecue. But first, I want to congratulate you on getting your voice back. Tell people how you lost it and why. So it was a, a long day of cheering at FedEx Field, obviously. For uh, Washington over those Bucks, but I'm a a sucker for DC sports, so I decided to go to the Capitals game immediately after that, and went to go cheer on the Caps, route the Penguins. So uh, I lost my voice midway through the Caps game, but you know what? If that's what it takes, I'll, I'll lose it every time. That's quite a day for DC sports. It it really was. We haven't had a day like that in a very long time. No, and by the way, for people listening, if you're a Caps fan. Steve Wino has a Caps podcast with, with Carl Alsner. Give it a listen. It's part of the Empire Network. A free plug for Steve Wino. How about that? But, Ted, I want to talk barbecue. So they have Carolina coming up, as we know, 
And I'm just curious what your take is on the Carolina barbecue, because there are some people who do not like it because it's vinegar based. But what is your take? I'm a big fan of Carolina barbecue. I mean, if you're going to cook a whole hog and you have enough time to do that, then great. But I like the Lexington style just because it's your shoulders. But me too. I like a spicy vinegar sauce. Yeah. I'm not a tomato sauce guy. I don't want to see tomatoes in my barbecue sauce personally. And why not? To me, it just masks the flavor. I don't want to add that tomato flavor into it. If the sauce isn't clear, it's not for me personally. Also, yeah, I'm keeping some of the sugars down on top of it. Mm, so yeah. that's more of a health thing for me. That, that's true. And I, I also like the, the pork shoulder, which is that which is the Carolina style. And, and I do use a vinegar, vinegar based sauce when I do pull pork with a little bit of the tomato sauce, because I do like a little bit in there, but I don't like I like to put more of the spices in there and let that carry the day. How about you? No, I'm, I'm right there with you. I'd rather put some spices in that vinegar. I won't use just a regular apple cider. There's actually an Asian vinegar that I'll find at a store that has peppers that have been really? soaking in the bottle. And it gives it a nice little kick on top of just your regular apple cider. Where, what kind of, what is that called? Where, where do you? Any Asian grocery store will have it. And I can send you a link and I don't want to butcher the name of it, but Sukha Maasim, and it translates to spicy. Spelled just vinegar. like it sounds, right? Spelled just like it sounds. Right. Just translate to spicy vinegar. There'll be little okay. tiny pieces of peppers in the bottom of the cool. bottle itself. So, and that, that gives a nice little kick then. Oh yeah, it definitely does. Do, do you, how often do you like to do pulled pork? If we have a lot of people coming over, it's just such a affordable cut yeah. that we'll do it a lot if we're entertaining. If I'm not entertaining, then I'll probably do ribs or something like that instead, just because I, you know, a better cut of meat in my opinion. But having said that, we've made five pulled pork dishes at the tailgate this year. I mean, there have been a lot of dishes. Do you have a favorite for a spice recipe or anything like that that you can share? Well, one that I like to do is I use a Dizzy Pig rub. It's a, a crossroads rub. And recipe-wise, it's pretty simple. I mean, yeah. kosher salt, the rub, but I'll actually brine the pork ahead of time. Really? And some people inject. Some people don't bother because pork is really fatty. I like to actually brine it. And so you I don't made, inject, you'd rather brine than inject. I'd rather brine than inject. And I made this for my wife's family before we were married. And they actually said, if it doesn't work out with you two, we're going to adopt you because this is the best <laughs> we've ever had. Really? Oh, yeah. How, and how, how are you smoking yours? What kind of wood? So typically, Carolina, you use hickory. Right. So I am try to be traditional. I'll use hickory. But I also like to make sure I do fat cap down. And I know some people don't agree, but if your heat's coming from the bottom, I like to protect that pork. So do the fat cap down. And depending on how big your smoker is, I've got a vertical one. So I'm not too, too worried about flare ups. And I'll usually wrap it. I mean, the only thing I like about Texas is the crutch. You know, that's really the yeah. only time I'll be a fan of theirs. And I'll wrap it, you know, I cook to temperature. I don't cook to time. I think anyone that right. does barbecue, you really have to cook to time. Uh, yeah. Time. Yeah. And, and that's like, you know, it's funny because there's some recipes I have where it says, well, for this, it's the typical time is this. And but like, you get out there and like, you just got to let it go, which is I've always learned to start earlier, earlier mm -hmm. than you think you need to. It's never, you never start early enough because at the worst, you can just let it <laughs> warm, you know, keep it yeah, warm. Just let it rest. Yeah. I mean, I've always made the mistake of, if I'm having guests over, I try and time it perfectly. It never complies. Something always comes up, mother nature, propane tags, you know, whatever it may be. So just do it a little bit earlier. Maybe let it rest a little bit longer than you were planning on. Now, I know this is dipping into South Carolina a little bit, but Charlotte is kind of close to there. Do you like the gold sauce? I don't mind the mustard sauce. You know, it's definitely unique when you're thinking about barbecue sauce. You know, it, it may be sacrilegious, but there are some places out there that are more commercialized where, you know, maybe a mission barbecue or something like that. Where right. You can I mean, they get that. that. 
yeah. on the side and I'll definitely, you know, try it out, but it's not my go-to. Do you, do you like, do you do pork? The, like I, when I redo pulled pork, eventually I'm going to have tacos out of that. <laughs> do you, you do that and do you have anything that you like to put in there with it? I definitely like a nice vinegar based coleslaw. If I'm going to throw it in a taco, it'll be a taco, but kind of with a barbecue spin on it. So I'm not a mayonnaise coleslaw type of guy. I like yeah, to have vinegar. I much prefer vinegar with you. Yeah, right there with you. And if there's leftover pulled pork, I'm throwing that on top of some nachos or some mac and cheese. Is there's you, do, the you mix it with the mac and cheese? Oh yeah, I'll mix it with a nice creamy mac and cheese. You cook it just in there, or you? How do you do that? I'll like, warm it up and then throw it on top of the mac and cheese. I don't want to dry it out and cook it with the mac while it's going. Okay, that's I like that. Now, do you are you doing any sort of anything special for a when even though we're on the road? Are you doing a special at home for this for this kind of game? And do you will you have a Carolina theme? I'll definitely be making some pulled pork sliders at the house for the okay. game. You know me. I've got. Yeah, that's why I asked. I got to stay traditional and I, I feel like it's bad luck if I don't do it. So I'll be definitely making some sliders for the game and trying to see what else we have lying around the house. Frankly. What is the key for a good slider? I mean, man, is it as basic as make the good pulled pork and put it on the slider bun? No, you got to have a good bun. There you and go. And what kind of bun are you using? So it might be a little sacrilegious, but I like a Hawaiian bread. Oh, Maybe yeah. These yeah, slider yeah. rolls. And yeah, I've had those. Oh, yeah, a little sweet, but I'll toast it and put some butter on it and actually get it nice and crispy on there, get a little bit of texture. And, oh, man, that's good. And throw some coleslaw on top of it. I'm, I'm starting mouth water right now. I've used those for, like, a brisket, um, like a little brisket slider, where you put a little bit of – you put an aioli sauce on there, but also with a little bit of um, some – I had smoked cheddar cheese that I made. I smoked on the grill, put that on top of it. But it was with the Hawaiian bread buns, and those were it was it was really good. So there you go. So um, anything else about Carolina barbecue that that you want to share that that is important for people to know? I mean, really, when it comes down to it, just cook what you like. I mean, the big essence of Carolina barbecue is it's pork for the most part. You're not going to find chicken. Some will say maybe ribs, but it's pork. If you like a sauce a certain way. Make it how you like it. Make it how your guests like it. And if anything, you're just eating barbecue. Just have a good time. And, you know, it's funny because like sometimes when I've made it, I will make two different sauces. One's vinegar based. One might be tomato based. And then I'll, if people want one, I'll put, I'll put two, you know, you have a big bowl of pulled pork and I can separate the two so you can get two different flavors out of it too. I like to do that. And, and I think, oh, yeah. I mean, my family likes that too. So there you go. Now we're all hungry. Thanks a lot, Ted. And thanks for coming on as always. Thank you for having me, John. Take care. That's it for this episode. Thanks to Bobby McCain and Ted for joining me. Don't forget to help out with the coat drive and other goods if you can. And thank you as always for listening. I'll be back with another episode after Sunday's game. Talk to you next time. <laughs>